Welcome back everybody to your C programming series. This video we are going to go over another example of a complex conditional, but we're going to step up our game a little bit and make it a little bit more complicated. As a reminder, we need to know what relational operators are and logical operators. So for example, we could have something like this. int x equals 5, and then we could say x is less than 5. This is really super simple, and you can kind of just see it as 5 is less than 5, since the value of x is 5, which is obviously false because they're the same number, so one can't be less than the other. But if we did something more obvious, like x is greater than 1, this would be true. And then when you have logical operators, you can combine these things. So for example, if we had x is greater than 1 and x is greater than 2, these would both have to be evaluated as true. And in this situation, we can actually simplify this expression. Because if you think about it, x is greater than one has to be true, and x is greater than two has to be true. Well, if we had something like x is three, if we work backwards on this one, x is greater than two is automatically going to make x greater than one. So this could be simplified to just x greater than 2. And you can kind of use those intuitive simplification skills to make complex conditionals smaller and easier to read. And when we are dealing with Boolean logic, there's like tons of tutorials and stuff on taking a really large expression and simplifying it down to the bare minimum. And that process is done to make the most simple circuits. And it's really cool. I, I'm terrible at it. I barely, I barely survived. I took a computer engineering class, barely survived. I managed to get a good grade, but it was kind of, um, it was very challenging for me. <laughs> but this stuff is fairly easy in the beginning, but when it gets to some more complex things, it can get a little complicated. So here we have a crazy complex conditional. Don't freak out. It's actually pretty simple once you start looking at it and there's some things we can simplify to, to make it a little smaller. So one of the first things you're going to notice is that there's three parentheses. So I use parentheses very uh, liberally and basically anytime I could use a parentheses, I will use one because it helps organize and it helps make sure you're understanding what you're asking. <laughs> and honestly, when you get into some kind of complex conditional like this, it's very easy to not really ask the right question. And as a result, certain entries of X and Y are going to get into the code block when they should not. So in my recommendation, uh, avoid complex conditionals like this. If you need to, you can do the same thing with nested if statements. So for example, we could have a first if statement talking about this first expression, and then within this code body of this if statement, we can have another if statement talking about the next expression. Obviously that's gonna make your code larger and maybe a little bit more uh, cumbersome to go through, but as a result, it's sometimes a little bit more clear on what you're asking. You can kind of see it as you have a group of valid options and as you go in to each of the if statements you start severing off invalid results until you just get to a small result set that gets inside the code block of the final if statement. That to me is a little bit more easy to process than having just a ton of values and just saying any values that don't meet this rule are severed off. That's really confusing to me. <laughs> so in general, I try to avoid complex conditionals beyond just a few simple things. And I usually try to avoid mixing ors with ands, as it's, uh, it can be challenging to really know what you're asking for. But just for laughs, let, let's look at this and see if we can wrap our mind around it. <laughs> let's say x has the value five and y has the value 10. When you're evaluating something like this, you always wanna work yourself from the inside out. So what that means is you find the innermost parentheses and start there. So for example, we could start here at this line right here. It also helps to kind of think about what's going on here and where the parentheses are lining up. So you see this if statement opens and then it closes down here. Within that we have two parentheses, two here and then two here. 
So what's going on is we are grouping this one with this one out here, which doesn't really need to be there. <laughs> so in this situation, you could cleanse your code by getting rid of these parentheses. But before we dive into that, let's just think of some ways we can simplify this. So looking at x is greater than zero and x is not equal to zero, this is redundant because if x is greater than zero and both of these have to be true, then what's gonna happen is we have to have x greater than zero. If we had a negative two, for example, or a negative anything, this would fail. If we had the or operator instead of the and, if we had or and we had negative two, it would pass because it would say x is greater than zero. Well, negative two, that's not gonna pass. So that, that one would be false, but x is not equal to zero would be true. That would not pass. But there's one other thing attached here with this and, y has to be greater than zero. So if y is 10, this whole section would pass. And don't worry about writing all this out. I just kind of want you guys to listen and intuitively think about this kind of stuff. So this expression here, let's just pull that out. This could be rewritten as x is greater than zero and y is greater than zero. So all that's saying is both of the numbers have to be positive. This is another thing here. So we have a, uh, a not operator with a comparison operator in parentheses. This could actually be rewritten as x is less than or equal to y. Because what it's saying is x is not greater than y because we're uh, inverting it. So originally we had x is greater than y and then we wanna flip that so x is not greater than y. But if, if something is not greater than y, it's automatically less than or equal to. So this could be cleaned up by replacing it with x is not equal to y. Oh, and look at that x is not equal to y. We already have that in our expression. So x is not equal to y or x is not equal to y is redundant. So we could actually get rid of the second one here. So originally we were gonna just start evaluating, but now we just simplified things a whole lot. So I'd love to rewrite this thing, but I probably won't be able to with just my pure amazing memory. <laughs> but essentially you can see what's going on. Once we started to evaluate it, then we can think about what is going to be evaluated as true. And you wanna work from the inside out. So for example, we have this in parentheses and it with something else in parentheses. So this whole expression has to be true and this whole expression has to be true. And then there's another one. This whole expression has to be true and this whole expression has to be true. So it kind of starts with these sections that all have to be evaluated to true in order for the whole thing to pass. So essentially what this is asking, x modulus two is asking if it's even, because anything that's even when divided by two, the remainder is gonna be zero. So x has to be even, y has to be even, and they both have to be greater than zero, and when you add them together, it has to be greater than 10, and x has to be less than or equal to y. So that would be the smaller, simpler expression, which would only have a set of numbers that would pass as true. That's kind of how you go through the process of simplifying and processing this kind of thing. <laughs> so this video was a little um, odd in that it's not really something you have to do a whole lot. Just kind of wanted to give you some time to really think about these expressions and um, try to understand what's gonna happen when you have something like this. Not entirely practical for every certain situation, of course, because you're most of the time just gonna have something really simple like this rather than everything, but it's still helpful to go through and think about it. So hopefully this was helpful to some of you. If not, go to the next video because I think we'll get into some more fun stuff. So thank you guys for watching. Please be sure to subscribe, help me out. I'll see you in the next video.